here on site right now in Joe Manganello's home in the game room. And we've got Joe with us here right now. We're getting ready to lift our table in. And the centerpiece will be, of course, Black Forest Wood Table. So if you have been subscribed to our channel for any length of time, you know that this video has been a long time in the making and we have finally delivered the table to Joe Manganello. But we're gonna kinda do a recap because it has been over eight months since our last update video on this. So we're gonna take you through the entire build process of creating the custom Dungeons and Dragons table for Joe Manganello. But if you're just here to see the delivery, we're gonna put the timestamps below and you can skip ahead to when we fly down to Los Angeles and deliver this to Joe Joe and Sophia. So as you saw, this slab is absolutely massive, which is kind of fitting for Joe. It's bass stone walnut from our friends down at GL Veneer, and we're splitting this slab down the middle for length to create a river. And something that we unfortunately didn't get filmed here is the breaking of the slab because it was so warped. Uh, we had to cut a relief cut in the bottom and manually snap the piece to, this isn't the break we're talking about here either. There's a larger break coming up, but we had to manually snap the piece lengthwise to, to get it flat enough. So once we have this massive slab cut up and debarked we can place the pieces in the mold and begin pouring our base layer for this piece so there's a couple of reasons why we do a base layer it's typically to hide the appearance of the mounting plates for the legs because if you didn't do this opaque layer and you just had transparent resin all the way through you would see those quite obviously what it also does is it allows us to achieve the desired color that the clients looking for while still maintaining depth in the clear pour on top because if we were to pour something with this vibrant of a blue the full thickness of the table it would completely hide all of the depth in the live edge of the wood and it, it would still look nice but it kind of eliminates some of the character that you can have in a piece so here you can see a really good example of that we've got all of that live edge in there and once the base layer is about 50% cured that is the perfect time to come along and pour your top layer you can wait until it's completely cured and sand it before pouring your top layer but if you wait until it's halfway cured the top layer of a pocket that you pour on actually kind of deforms your bottom base layer and you get these really interesting rippled effects. It's hard to see on video but when you get up close to a table like this that's done properly it's really really interesting and almost looks like water. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing that pour. Um, we were here at like literally midnight last night because we had to get that timing perfect for the base layer, but you gotta do what you gotta do. And it, it came out really, really awesome. We got this rippled effect that we were going for in the base layer. I don't know if you guys can see it now, but once we get it demolded, you'll really be able to see it from the end. Here you can somewhat see those ripples I was talking about, but now that we have the piece demolded after waiting for seven days, we can get this down onto our CNC machine for flattening. Yeah, wow. man, it's gonna be cool. Cause he also like just came out with this uh, full custom set of figurines, yeah. like characters yeah. based on all the people in his group. Okay, so yeah. He's going to have to invite us all there to play the Morello with the guitar, play. killing everybody. Yeah. I have Joe's D&D <laughs> we can do this. So Joe selected one of our signature X spaces to go with his table, but everybody in his Dungeons and Dragons group being so big, uh, we had to make this space bigger than any of our standard sizes. So we designed a completely custom size for Joe to give a finished table height of 32 inches instead of 30 inches. Two inches does not sound like a lot, but it does make a noticeable difference when you're sitting there at that table. So that little bit more will just make it more comfortable for them while they're sitting there and playing. Then, once the pieces are S4S'd, we get them onto our CNC machine, which not only cuts them to size, but it's also gonna cut the recesses for the joinery to assemble this base. 
And then once everything has been cut on our CNC machine, we can begin our assembly process. So we're using Titebond 3 as an adhesive, which is pretty standard around our shop. Even though this is an interior project and you could probably get away with using the Titebond 2, the Titebond 3 is considered a superior adhesive, so it may be overkill, but we generally go overkill with everything we do. So we're putting lots of glue on all of the surfaces, and then we have some dowels that have been machined by our CNC machine. They do obviously help with alignment, but they also give quite a bit of strength to the joint as well. So now that we've got the large X together, we can actually assemble the smaller X components onto it. And to give the space a little bit more texture, we're gonna be charring the outside surface before we go ahead and finish it. So this process is commonly referred to as Shusugi Ban, which is an ancient Japanese woodworking technique that consists of charring the wood to actually kind of give it rot resistance and weather resistance. Um, we're not so much charring it to the same extent that you would when doing traditional Shusugi Ban. We're just trying to burn off that top layer of the wood to expose uh, some of that summer wood, which is softer. So then we can come back to this after, brush it with a wire wheel, and it just enhances the texture and the character of the base. Then once we finish charring and brushing the piece, we come along with our general finishes wood stain. It's just obviously the black color, and we do sell this on our website as well if you want to find that. We'll put a link down in the description. But we found that this, this stain works the best for staining things like just that consistent deep black color. It does a really good job at hiding any variation in the wood grain. Like you can see on this piece of ash, some sections are burnt more than others, but by the time we put this stain on and buff everything off, we get a completely consistent finish on the grain. Now, this is a water-based wood stain, so something that you have to be careful of is if you're putting an oil-based finish over top, you need to make sure you give ample time for the water-based uh, stain to cure before you put your finish on, which typically is about one week. Then we're heading over to Jekko and they can begin putting on the acrylic urethane finish that's going to protect this top. So for some of our pieces we do oil-based finishes and some of our pieces we do acrylic urethane and it really just depends on the lifestyle of the client. Clients who want maximum durability, they want no maintenance and they don't necessarily care about let's say leaving the wood feeling the most natural uh, but they just want the most protection, the acrylic urethane is the way to go. If you're someone who you know you'll take special care of the piece, you're going to use coasters, you're going to use placemats, and you don't mind doing a bit of maintenance, but you also want the most natural look and feel out of the piece of wood, then we recommend an oil-based finish because there's no layer that goes over top of the grain of the wood and you can feel all of those pores of the wood. You still get some of that with the urethane finish, but not quite as much as you would with an oil-based finish. This looks hazy. Because this didn't look this hazy when it was poured. This looked clear when it was poured. Like even the wood doesn't, like it doesn't look as brilliant, right? And the colors are all like muted down. It's probably no. too many layers of spray. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, that's like glass. Yeah, I mean obviously we sanded it, so it's not going to be that clear, like yeah. Glass, but it's it's definitely more clear than this. Like when it was poured, that's the clarity we had before. Yeah, so we've lost that. So as you can tell from the previous clips, we were a little stressed out. Um, what's happened here is, first of all, I want to say it's our fault because we left this table here too long. Jekko did nothing wrong here. Um, we weren't quite ready to bring this table back and it ended up getting damaged while it was staying here at Jekko's, which is natural. You know, people come into their shop, they see this beautiful table, the first thing they want to do is touch it, like I'm doing right now. I can't even help myself from doing it. Uh, that ended up in some small micro scratches and damage that we didn't want to send to Joe, so Jekko resprayed the table. Something that happens with polyurethane, though, when you add too many coats, is it goes cloudy. So that's what we're, what we're dealing with here now. We've got a gorgeous finish uh, that is going to protect perfectly, except it's too thick and it's coming out cloudy. So, unfortunately, that's probably going to mean this table is getting sanded back down all the way to the raw wood, uh, which sucks. It's a lot of work and it's just very unfortunate because when we came the first time, Jekko had it looking absolutely perfectly, but that's, that's kind of the nature of custom work. We deal with this all the time, stuff happens, 
and now we've got to go back to square one on finishing and get this redone. So good thing we have time, um, but there's a lot more work and we've got to do it all over. So unfortunately, this did require us to sand all of the finish off in order to get this table looking good again. We had to remove all of the acrylic urethane, go back down to raw wood, and we did have it sprayed again with the exact same process you guys saw before. So to avoid the repetition, we're gonna move right into the polishing process. So what Jack is doing now is using some automotive compounds and our rotary polisher. And this is an extra step that we weren't originally planning on doing, but in the time that we were spending fixing this table, we kind of have come up with this new system for a higher level of finish for the clients who want it, where after we spray our acrylic urethane, we polish it up to an even higher sheen, and it just makes the pieces look like a piece of glass, honestly. They look absolutely incredible. It's a crystal smooth finish, and then with the combination of our Black Forest ceramics on there, we still get really good durability out of this. So the next step and a very important step for this table is the application of our Black Forest ceramics. So this is a product that we're very proud of and you know, not to toot our own horn, but we do feel has kind of revolutionized the woodworking finishing industry because you're even starting to see other people coming out with their own ceramic coatings. But we are the original woodworking ceramic coating and just recently we've updated our formula to improve it even farther. Now all of our coatings are completely water-based, making them much more compatible with a wider range of woodworking finishes. Your typical automotive grade ceramic coatings have solvents as the carrier for them. And over time, uh, with repeated application of solvent-based coatings over an oil-based finished table, it is gonna strip that off and limit the durability of your piece. So by using a water-based coating, you don't have to worry about those durability issues. And another nice thing that our ceramic coating does is it almost kinda acts as like a filter for your wood. So once you put it on, it's gonna increase the contrast sort of increase the sheen and it gives a really thin layer of protection on there. So we have three different grades of our coating. We have a gold, a platinum, and a diamond. They all have varying levels of protection with diamond being the best and then our diamond formula also has small epoxy nanoparticles on it. So it's the most durable one that we offer and you guys can check out the annotation here on the screen if you want to see an in-depth video on the ceramic. It walked right across the bed. Pictures of those. <laughs> I don't want to even sit down on anything. Haley, we finally did it. We pushed you over the edge. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> so we're at uh, we're at another hotel here, and we're gonna we gotta go get some water and yeah. stuff like we're that. We're gonna hope Still? that there's no rats at this place. Oh gosh, here we go, second attempt. Well, we were hoping this wouldn't happen, but it's pouring rain for the morning of the delivery, so. Let's see how this goes. Well, we're going to Joe Manganello and Sofia Vergara's house uh, to deliver Joe's Dungeons and Dragons table. We're here on site right now in Joe Manganello's home in the game room. And we've got Joe with us here right now. And he's giving us the tour around the space. So we're getting ready to lift our table in. We're still waiting for the crane, but Joe's going to give us a little tour here first. Yeah, so this is kind of the before. Uh, before the table comes in, which will be the first piece that gets moved in. Actually, the first piece, I, I can't lie. The first piece is actually this, if you want to catch that. That's, um, that's an end of the last home from Dragonlance. Uh, I've been working with um, wizards on bringing Dragonlance to life for many years. Uh, in entertainment, and somebody built me in the last time. So actually, yeah. technically, it, it beat that was, that was <laughs> it beat the table. Yeah. <laughs> and as you can see, it's 144 inches, which is 12 feet by five foot eight. So I basically measured out how far I could reach 
to the middle of the table. Okay. okay. So yeah. grab P. And that became yeah. kind of the width of the table. And 12 feet, um, my current gaming table was 11 feet. <clears throat> and, um, you know, everybody was kind of crunched, didn't necessarily have enough room on it for their stuff. And so I wanted to make something that was big enough, like, you know, the big show Paul White plays in the game. He's over seven foot, oh, <laughs> 400 yeah. and something pounds, so yeah. we needed a bigger table okay. to fit all those big guys. Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah. I had a really big game in here. Vince Vaughn's really tall, my brother's six foot seven. So yeah. anyway, big guys, big table. Yeah. Um, but it'll go right here, it'll be beautiful. You can see there's this great fishbone pattern with the wood, um, and then everything, you know, has kind of been in a complementary color, whether you've got the, the cabinetry here where all my dwarven forge and terrain will fit in there. Um, we'll be able to put all the board games here. Like I worked on Hero Quest last year. Um, I, I designed the relaunch of the game um, with Hasbro. So those like those will go here. Um, and then eh, every, oh. every dungeon game room has to have a secret door. So that's going to be some nice. storage and things like that right in there. It's all secret, secret passage. And then um, nice wood beams. We'll have great artwork around. I'll have a dragon heads up there. Whiz Kids is going to finish the five dragon heads of Tiamat by the end of this year, so those will all be up there. Sideshow. They sent me a bunch of statues, so those will all fit up on the top. And uh, you know, we'll have. I have a ton of artwork. You know, so I have a company, Death Saves, and I have a ton of artwork that I've commissioned from amazing artists from around the world. So there will be like paintings and artworks and things like that over here. We'll have a lot of my painted miniatures by Stephen Oaks and Method Man. Those will all be displayed here. And then these recesses inside of here, these are uh, like, you know, museum quality painting lights that will go up above because this will be an oil painting of my character Archon the Cruel by Larry Elmore. And then this one over here will be same thing except this painting that my wife got me of my character Archon painted by Jeff Easley. Um, so those will be featured here. And then you've got plenty of room for all the miniatures, two-tier system, storage system. And then we get all the shelves here. This will be all the books, all the, you know, the old boxes I've been collecting, lots and lots of uh, modules and all of the old like orange spine books. I have all of those, all the Dragonlance novels will be across the top. So, you know, we'll, um, be able to display everything in here, and the centerpiece will be, of course, Black Forest wood table that we've been working on for a couple of years now, which is finally done. So we're good. What type of coffee do you all talk about? The possibilities, the permutations of what you can do, and, and then you can build it on the table. So that's why having a table this size, and kind of also with the terrain, I could even build terrain on it where, you know, the blue is. Water. Like yeah, yeah, the table yeah. can be the table yeah. can actually yeah, be yeah. and you can build off of that, which is like really cool, you know. So um, yeah, I mean, for years I've thought about what's going to be the next table. Like when we move into the new house, what would the next table be? What would like the ultimate table be? Yeah. And the thing about it was, I wanted something that also, if a random person walked in, they go, "This is gorgeous." Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like an adult yeah. table. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, and I looked at all the gaming tables that were out there, and I thought. I want, I want, oh I want one of those blue resin tables. I was on Instagram and I just kept following you guys. And I was yeah. like, look, I was fascinated. I was watching the process of mixing, oh, <laughs> mixing the resins and pouring yeah. the red. I would just watch video yeah. after video, like yeah. for, like all the time. Yeah. I was just watching different colors and I would screenshot and I made like a folder. Cause someday yeah. I was like, I'm going to get one. Yeah for the game room, and, and it, 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 then it was time. Whenever we send a table down here with our Roberts and screws, none of the Americans could open it because it's not a common bit down here. It's so we actually have to tape one on the crate yeah. so that people could have one. Is that fun for you to do? Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, yeah we enjoy it. So not only did we have challenging weather, as you could see for this delivery, but we've also got a challenging lift to get it up. It's not just going on the main floor. So Joe actually had a spider crane rented that is going to lift the table up, and we have to using hoist, put this thing on edge and get it through a door which it barely happens to fit through. All while we're getting soaked in the pouring rain trying to keep the table dry, so wish us luck. Good, a little wet, um, but we got it out of the truck. 
Yeah. Now we have to get it up into the dungeon. Like, oh, it's kind of like a hood. Yeah, exactly. yeah kind of like, yeah. it's like a, what do they call those, a Versailles chair? Oh, yeah, yeah, like where it, like hooks, where it has like a canopy over it. Yeah. Yeah, that's oh, awesome. It's like a throne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, park the crate here, open it up. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> I've been watching the forecast here for the last week and it's gone from anywhere from 75 to 100 millimeters of rain today to 25 to 30 <laughs> to <laughs> what LA, we got. It's not, yeah. it's not the it thing. never happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they don't have enough reservoir to catch it all, so it's just like a waste. This bonus won't anything. She's looking really nice. Oh, no. She wants water or? The top cornices, they stick out farther than the gate, okay? So make sure he doesn't hit those when he goes out. Okay. Oh, okay. And then out. What we're thinking now, if it's possible, we'd like to unload the crate in here. Where? No? no? Okay, so we'll just have to bring the base in. We should bring, yeah. well, we won't bring the crate in, but we can lift the base in yes, once we, we have the top off. Well, we're just uh, taking the screws out from the underside of the table, um, and we're going to take the table off, put it in the garage, then we're going to get the base, put it in the garage, then we're going to strap the table and lift it with a crane, and hopefully we don't drop it. Okay, I forget what it that is. Is that the width? Yeah. Oh, there it is. Okay. So this side faces here. Yeah. And, and that, that side. one with the hole goes towards the back. Well, somebody didn't call them back, and so we had to schedule it for this week, which is all rain. So now we have to take the railing out. I mean, I'm just saying, like. Yeah. So we just have to establish um, which end has to come in first now. Uh, Joe's decided which end he likes that he wants to sit at. So we just got to go tell the guys downstairs to bring that end in first. That looks like this. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah this there's little. There's a hole right here, so it looks like it's that side. Yep. Okay, so this end is where Joe wants to sit. It's going to the back of the room. So this end has to go in first. Three, two, one. Watch the crane, Thank you. 
It's leaning. Tip towards me. Or it does. Tip towards me. Bring it up. Towards my voice. This way. Tip. Tip up. Tip. Ah. Right there. Straight. Straight. Straight up. Turn it. Turn it. Okay. Come, come towards me. Hang on. It's gonna come towards me. So, pull the four wheelers. Phones under. Towards me. Yeah. Okay, we're in. We're in. We're in. Good. We're in. 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 we are in to get these up here in my feet. Let's see. We just gotta tweak it. Just We've been talking about this for two years, I think. Two, just about. At least two years. Yeah. yeah it was Back and forth. Two years ago, I reached out. Yeah. I think we missed your message at first or something, even. And then I, I yeah, found I it. I sent a huge detailed email with like all these like comp shots. And, yeah. And then there was no response. So yeah. I thought you guys were like, you know, big timing me or something. Like you're ghosting me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're small potatoes for us, Joe, yeah. <laughs> no, no, and then I saw that and I actually had to do a double take. I'm like, hang on, Wait, hold on. Two no, what? Because for years, I knew, I knew we were going to move into a new house, and yeah. I knew that I was going to have a new gaming area. Yeah. My game had grown to like 12 people, including me. That's how many is in your... 12, yeah. Right. yeah. So I figured like, I wanted something 12 feet. Is it in there? It's all What's yours. This? Is this a proprietary Canadian... <laughs> it is, yeah. Tool? It's six sided, but none of the sides are the same length, right? Sure. So you got to put it in in one position only. Yeah. Yeah, so. Got to be different than IKEA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay, so so are we going to open it now? Or yeah, you can, you can do it. Rip it open now? It's you, the unveiling, yeah. No. So, yeah. Dusted up. Is that the this is Bastone. That's my favorite. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's a hybrid that only grows in California. Yeah. Can you see it, James? 
It's so amazing. Do you want it? Yeah. So in the weekly game, my team, my game, it's like Tom Morello raging us the uh, machine. No, the big that. show, the wrestler. <laughs> Dan and Dave <laughs> created Game of Thrones. Oh wow. Oh, my God. That's uh, freaking crazy amazing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All of y'all like oh, you can yeah, that, that's like yeah, they're in my group and then there's like a big uh, you know guy who works for the Russo brothers, wow. like writer producer. Yeah. And, um, and then you've got my brother, my producing partner, yeah. you've got um, who else is in my group? Um, Vince Vaughn. Oh my god. Oh, Vince that's amazing. Right. And, yeah. then, uh, and then like James Gunn used to come over and play. Oh my god. And then like the, you know, it's like, then there's like, you like have fun Scotty in from Anthrax. Yeah. Like, you know, Rob Zombie. Oh my you, know, like, you know, like there's all these people that <laughs> yeah. like, are like, you know, Rich eyes yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Tiffany Haddish. She's yeah. like, I'll do the documentary uh -huh. if you run a game. Okay, okay Tiffany. I'll do it. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. a couple of the Steelers were like, you got to show us how to play. I'm like, okay. So so it kind of becomes, it just depends on who's yeah. in, you know, and then yeah. I run games for people that either haven't played before or people yeah. that played when they were younger. Have you done it with Head Sophia on there yet? Never. No, I'm just kidding. I'm joking with you. I'm joking with you. Yeah. She yeah. does like a really nice spread. Though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, she doesn't yeah, yeah. come near. She doesn't She's come into the dungeon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Whatever way you want it off of here. This, this is exactly where it should be. <laughs> I measured it all weekend long. This is yeah. exactly where it should be. Okay. This is the exact place. Yeah, yeah, we're not moving. Yeah, yeah. We did not, we did not move this thing in. He said, don't move it. You heard. Watch we're gone. <laughs> this, this whole thing is cut because that's where the table is. No, this is it. This is where it is. Because this is exactly the amount that the chair fits perfect. I measured it all. Okay. This is the I'll, this is all. I'll keep everybody off of it. Okay. Push up with the chair. Don't you get cranked out of here? <laughs> yeah, you have to come back and move the chair. Don't put your lunch on it. Nobody's just hanging out. Nobody's sleeping on it. Sitting on nothing. No Nobody touches the. As a matter of fact, just stop looking at it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. <laughs> Don't breathe on it. You're gonna need like full-time security in this room. Yeah, yeah. 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 Rope top. Yeah. And then, uh, this be yeah, I mean, I'm gonna. As soon as everything's on, I'm gonna pull protection, and no one goes in this room. Colors nice. Yeah. It goes great with the different, you know, yeah, each wood is a little, round a little bit different. Because yeah. it's not too matchy either, like it still yeah. pops on its yeah, own. Yeah, I don't want to match it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it takes a lot of That's okay, that's okay. You want to take No, right now. I want to take a picture. There we go. I want to send, ah. want to send the guys in the group. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, it looks a lot better uh, now everybody's out of here. <laughs> It's, what a fucking, you know, you walk in and it's like, holy shit, you know, like what a fucking it's different. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's yeah. like, because there's a fucking, like, adult, you know what I mean, like the piece of art. It's like, so art, right? right? It is a piece yeah. of art. And that's what I love about yeah. it, is that it's unique. Mm -hmm. Then also the idea that the resin, then there are different pores, there's different color yeah. combinations, each one is unique. Yeah. Everybody's piece is specific yeah. to what they want, their own need, the space yeah. that it's going to be in. Like, you know, I, this wood, knowing that that wood was going to be over here, because I had all these <laughs> pictures of what I, kind of the wood that I wanted, yeah. kind of the yeah. color wood, and then, of course, my wife was like, I don't want this to look like some Disney room. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it was like, in, in order to have it be, you know, functional as like, you know, a gaming table where we can all get around, you know, and hang out, but also have it be something beautiful that if you're showing the house, they're like, wow, yeah. this is gorgeous, yeah. you know? Yeah, if you want people to walk in here and say, I've no. never seen anything like no. that. But this, yeah. 
is the single widest fat stone walnut tree that's being cut out of California. Right. It's like yeah. nine feet wide oh, at the base. The yeah. And then yeah. it was so warped and twisted, like we actually had to snap this piece. Like that's what oh, this really? is. We yeah. broke it and then we placed it all back together in the resin. Yeah. 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 But I love that. And that was oh, it makes you know, it also for the size of the table that I wanted. You know, that's this is a pretty big fucking table. You know? Yeah. Um, but I love the character. I love just the pools, the islands oh, here. Yeah. It's amazing. You know, these little, these little tiny pools. Yeah. You know, the way that this kind of pops up here, but that's yeah. kind of slightly under. The, you can see the waves underneath. Yeah. It's amazing. The Some people have said amazing. this looks like a shark swimming through here. Oh, yeah. I didn't yeah. even think of that. That's cool. Yeah, it looks like some yeah, kind of creature coming yeah. through. Well, it's, yeah, it's like a. Orca with a baby. Yeah. <laughs> or actually, it looks like a great white, the, the way they yeah. have Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And then you see all this kind of the figure in the wood. Yeah. I bring it up and be like, yeah, yeah, no, no, I saw the video. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some guy this morning on the job set, which is like, yeah, yeah, no, I watched the video. I watched the video. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. You know, gaming tables generally are like, you know, they're kind of. They're like in pieces and they're modular and they have all these like drawers underneath yeah. with cup holders and shit like that. And I just was like, none of them look like like a fucking adult team. Like I wanted it to be like, oh, like to qualify as like something like this is like the standard. Yeah, like, like, it's like yeah, there's yeah. a there's yeah. another level like there's, there's a, a level you can do yeah. with like a bit of artistry, a yeah. bit of like yeah. style clash, yeah. like there's a yeah, so that that was the idea was that it would be, you know, it's like kind of another level. Yeah. <laughs> but it kind of sets the benchmark, I think. Yeah. It's kind of like, oh, if you want to do it that way. And not have your wife hate your guts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she said it was so beautiful. Yeah, she liked it. Yeah, she loved it. Yeah. 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 I asked her if she was going to build a throne on this side, too. For her? Yeah. I said you should do like a serpentine throne over here. Yeah, yeah. Does, yeah. She, does she ever step foot up here? <laughs> Yeah. Now, I've got her and her friends, though, trying to listen in on what that Oh, yeah. Like. <laughs> you know, look like at the old house, there's the top of the stairs, like, you know. And then, yeah, she had no idea. Until, like, yeah. the Game of Thrones guys, when they came through, then she, she was, was like, like oh, yeah, too, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you all were kids who learned Did how this. to do what you do by doing this thing. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, oh. Right, like yeah. it clicked. Yeah, you know? that was, it was like, like yeah, yeah, that's that's how we all figured out how to make characters, write shows, yeah, yeah. direct shows, yeah. long running storytelling, how yeah. that works. The myth behind all of it. Did all of yeah. it, ten thousand hours. All exactly. Of it. Yeah. You know, things like this always make us nervous. You know, especially knowing that we had to do the crane, yes. and then we actually we did a, a delivery a couple of years ago for Zed that he lives near yeah. the DJ, yeah. um, and we're there to do the delivery. No, no truck. I call my shipper. Oh, the table's in Toronto. So we had to come back two weeks later and do it all over again. But yeah. Yeah, we were talking about the rain, and it was like I get lost to the the documentary on Wednesday. I yeah. just go into directing mode, and, and then it's like I'm out. Yeah, and then so there was no way. Yeah, and we're talking like maybe weeks before we could do it again. Yeah, no. So this was perfect. I'm actually glad we we snuck it in. It no, sucked. I, I mean, I pulling that thing up. I mean, I was like, it's like it's, it's, it's like you're in shock. It's like I couldn't even. I'm trying to think of like what my brain was thinking when I pulled it up. It's just like you're kind of just taking it all in. It just all hits you, you know, like how, like beautiful, like it's just, there's so, so many little nuances. You know what I mean? Like I'm going to be sitting here, it's almost like looking at the clouds and seeing things in the clouds. I'm going to be sitting here just. Oh, you'll always continually discover new things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just love how you can kind of see. Is that a it's like the banks of a river yeah. or like, yeah. You know, like in those tide pools where you would kind of pull out little clams and shells and things. Yeah. That's what kind of what it, what it reminds me of. But like, yeah, it's just, that's a, it looks like a blue hole in the Bahamas. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Well, it's okay. amazing. And it's right here. I mean, it's just the, it's just the character. Better than expected? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 no. Okay. I mean, and my mind is blown. I, I, I really, I'm trying to. How long does it take you to make? Oh, there's. Well, there's going to be a video about it. There's a video, but I'd say hours. There's probably 300 hours in this table. 300 man hours. Like, even the polishing on this is. 
30 hours probably of poli like just to polish this and get it perfect. You have to split the tree, flip it, crack it. I mean, there's all of that. Yeah. Then there's the, the sanding it down to get it to be the, the right thickness. Yeah, the two layered pour we did. Two layer pour, there's the metallic pour on the yeah. bottom and then the clear kind of resin on top. And then like even the, like you see all the ripples in the bottom, yeah. the only way to get that, we have to perfectly time that base pour so it's half cured. Right. And like what's causing those ripples is the weight of the top layer of resin. It actually deformed that bottom layer and then it all kind of hardened. But everyone that. has to be on standby, ready to go. Yeah, and sometimes go. it's in the middle of the night even when that happens, but. <laughs> and how much resin went into this? Uh, this one I think in total was 180 liters. Which is a ton. Yeah. 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 I'm trying doing trying doing the math on I gallons. Know, like <laughs> is it two point two for liquid? That's uh, what four, five, yeah, four point four liters per gallon. So yeah. It's been a while since I scored. Forty gallons. 40, 50 40 gallons. gallons. Yeah. Fifty yeah. gallons. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. yeah. And the size is perfect too. Like you even when people are sitting, you're gonna have lots of room to go all the way around. Yep. Like I said, like the theory was, if I stand here, can I get to the middle? <laughs> yeah. Can I reach? Yeah. Can yeah. I reach the middle? And then the interface. And then everybody kind of has, you know, it's, it's wide enough that everybody can. They get room. Yeah. And it's two inches taller than standard. So yeah. You guys can yeah. all fit yeah. on it. Yeah. yeah. Big people. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Good for me. <laughs> My brother's 6'7", yeah. Vince is 6'5". A big, lot of big guys are on this thing. Big show's like 7'4", <laughs> <four> or something <laughs> crazy. Oh, that's so, huge. Yeah, we got, we got some big people in the group. I can't wait to see some yeah. of you guys all enjoying this thing. Okay, okay. Right. I think our job here is done. Is that it? Thanks for having us. Yeah. yeah. That's it. It's been a pleasure, man. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Thanks, guys. Just want to warm up in a couple of days here. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. when we leave. Yeah. <laughs> when you guys leave, we'll take the cold away. weather with us. <laughs> now I'll have to cook up some other project to get you to come back home. All right. We love it, man. Well, you got that office down there. I don't know if you got a desk yet. Or... Yeah. Well, there could be all kinds of tables in here. Yes. Oh, good. Absolutely, man. I right. think you got her number. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, uh, I'll, I'll follow you on Instagram. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, man. Joel Dates, I appreciate no, please. it. Thank you. 100%. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah. It was a pleasure, pleasure. Thank to get you. soaking wet and moving your table in. Good <laughs> yeah. production. Yeah. 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 Thanks, it's all guys. good, man. man whatever. whatever you need. Yep. How amazing. How cool. Yeah. And we did unfortunately miss this on camera, but did you hear when Joe um, was telling us how he gets stopped on the street by people? who have seen our video <laughs> no of the way, table. Egg, yeah. yeah, he says he'll just be walking down the street and they'll say, oh, you're getting the gaming table, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys for watching. I'm gonna let my dad do his first ever outro here. Go ahead, take the wow. stage. <laughs> Thanks, Dylan. I mean, you know, that was actually one of the more exciting deliveries we got to do. It poured rain. I enjoyed every drop of it. And, you know, I don't know what to say. Hopefully you guys will subscribe to our channel and like our videos and leave lots of comments because I like arguing with everybody. There you go. Thanks, you guys. <laughs> I, I mean, I was in shock. I whipped, I whipped, the, I whipped it open. I was like, you know, just like kind of in shock, you know? <laughs>